Okay then, I want to speak about Red Bull and the old cost cap situation. I'm still thinking about it. And I'm thinking about it because it's Red Bull. Red Bull are a massive global company dealing with millions, billions of pounds of transactions. Money's are going, money's going in, money's going out, left, right and centre. They're dealing with billions of pounds worth. Billions of, let's just say currency, is going through their system an astonishing amount. Now, I know the Formula One side of Red Bull is separate, but how separate? It's still working under the Red Bull name, so I think it's still going to be working within the Red Bull confinements. The way Red Bull run their whole situation, the Formula One team's going to fall in line with that. So for Red Bull, a team that have been in Formula One for a long time, sponsored or funded, however it works with Red Bull, by this massive global company. What I'm getting at is the fact that they broke the cost cap. Red Bull, a massive team, dealing with money all the time, dealing with transactions all the time, money going in and out, all over the place, every single day. But speaking about the Formula One team, Red Bull Racing, racing in Formula One, Formula One bringing a cost cap, which caps the team from spending too much money to try and make it fair. And Red Bull broke the cost cap. A team, the, an organisation that deal with money all the time. Billions of pounds all the time. So how can they not sort out their books to make it so they're under the cost cap? I think they must have broke the cost cap so much got to a point where they thought guys we can't swiss this anymore we're gonna have to make out we broke it just a little bit even though we broke it a lot because it's red bull or any any big company knows how to do this they know how to make it so their books are right at the end of the year to get your books wrong at the end of the year as a massive company that's a schoolboy error that is beginner stuff you can be a self you can be self-employed and you have to do your own tax return. And it's not that difficult. You can do it yourself. So for a big company like Red Bull to break the cost cap, something fishy is going on. I definitely think they broke it by a, a substantial amount. And that catering thing, that was, that was a, a decoy. That was to make people look over here while they did something over there. Red Bull, are, they're, they're not... St- Red Bull have seemed very clever to me, especially the way Red Bull have grown as a company. All they do is throw money at stuff. So for a company that throws money at stuff and sponsors things and gets their brand as high as they've got it just by using money to go wrong with money, that don't make no sense to me. They must have broke the cost cap a crazy amount. So there's like, let's just make it so we broke it a little bit and let's make it look like we did it on something that was nothing to do with the car. It was just something that was feeding the team and it made us break the cost cap. They know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. It was nothing to do with no catering. A team like Red Bull, a company like Red Bull, don't go over budget because they spent too much money on sandwiches, man. That don't happen. That don't happen. So Red Bull broke that cost cap and they knew they broke it. They tried to make it look like they broke it just a little bit and make it look like they broke it by spending money on things that wasn't really anything to do with the car. But it's all a scam, man. Red Bull know what they're doing. And I can't see a company like Red Bull getting their books wrong at the end of the season while all the other teams are getting it right. It don't make no sense. We know what Red Bull are like. Look at this. Look at this Red Bull. What's it called now? I don't know what it's called anymore. The... um, the engines that they're making, Red Bull powertrains or whatever it's called now, whatever they're calling it. To me, that, I don't know if I've spoken about this before, but to me, that is just, it's another scam. That team that they're making up, this Red Bull powertrains, is just going to be a load of people from Honda working in a building that has now got a Red Bull badge on it instead of a Honda badge on it. There's no way. In my, in my way of thinking and what I know about Formula One and just 
general business, which isn't a lot, got to admit, it's not a lot. But if you just stand back and look at it, Red Bull have been developing these engines with Honda. Honda are the biggest engine manufacturer in the world. The biggest one in the world. They supply more engines than any other engine manufacturer in the world. Now it took them quite a bit of time to get it sorted when they came back into Formula 1 because the Honda engine was something to avoid for many years. But because they are the biggest manufacturer in the world, they was always going to get it right eventually. You don't become a company like they've become and do what they do without reaching the goals that you want to reach. It was always going to end up making a good, powerful, reliable engine. It was always going to happen eventually. And then now we're seeing it here now. And now that's happened, Red Bull are going to turn around and say, thanks Honda, thanks for everything. Now we're going to go and do it alone. Now, fair enough, but when it comes to business, that is bad practice. A team or an organization like Honda, the biggest engine manufacturer, and if you want to start making engines and you go against the biggest one directly, and not even just go against them, like you use them, you go to them, you learn from them, then you walk away and turn your back and take money that should be theirs. Because if Honda leave Formula One or stay in Formula One and Red Bull make their own engines, they are in direct competition with them. Maybe Red Bull don't care. We've seen it really could be legit that Red Bull are a team that just don't care. They have no moral standards. They, they started by selling a drink that will literally help kill you. It will literally help to kill you, that drink will. And I ain't no exaggeration. So maybe they just have no morals at all. So they will do business with somebody and they will stab them in the back. Or Red Bull and Honda are always gonna be in cahoots while they're doing this Red Bull powertrains thing. It makes sense to me, it really does. Honda have the experience, Red Bull are going to start from scratch and all of a sudden just make the best engine in Formula 1 without Honda. I doubt it very much and you could say Honda was struggling but they worked with Red Bull so Red Bull might be getting on their high horse saying yeah you was trying to make engines and you couldn't get to where you got to without us. So Red Bull could be on their high horse right now looking at Honda thinking you wouldn't be what you are right now without us but again. That is cocky because even though it took Honda a while to get sorted, they're still Honda. They are still the biggest manufacturer of engines in the world. You can't take that away from them. It's always going to be better to have them on side. And for Red Bull to turn their back on them, I think, I don't know. I'm not a millionaire. I don't, I don't do business like this. So I don't know. But just looking to go and stand on Honda's toes wouldn't be a good idea. So with saying that, I believe that this Red Bull powertrains or whatever it's called now, I don't know if it's called that anymore, whatever they want to call it, where they're going off and making their own engines, their own power units in their Red Bull factory under Red Bull powertrains, if it's still called that. But whatever it's called, it's going to be Red Bull something. And I, I'm pretty sure that all they're doing is taking the little side team, the Formula One side team from Honda and I'm recruiting them and I'm putting them in a factory with a Red Bull logo on it. So all the years of development that they've had is not going to go to waste. I think it's a, I think it's a, some kind of scam behind this. I don't know if they're allowed to do it or not. There was something back in the day where they, they was allowed to have a bit more time. Um, I can't remember what was going on with that. They was developing something and Red Bull were allowed a little bit more time than everybody else so they could get this thing going. Whatever they were doing, I don't know. Didn't look into it didn't really care about it but back in the day Red Bull had more time I'm sure they did had more time than anybody else working with Honda because it's just the way they are man they always find a way to get the upper hand on everybody else they always find a legal way to cheat <laughs> they always do they always do I don't know if all the teams do this but the focus is on Red Bull right now and all I see when I look at Red Bull is just bad behavior Things that are just a bit shady all the time. They never seem to just do the right thing for the right reasons. There's always something behind what they do. They're always trying to scam something out of something. They're always trying to squeeze more than everybody else. 
and they always seem to get it and get away with it. Look what happened in 2021. I've never seen nothing like it in sport. Nothing. Nothing. And they went and got away with it. And they're going to get away with this too. I don't know why other teams aren't like saying something about some of the things that Red Bull do. Why is everybody so quiet about it? Like Mercedes, why are they so respectful when it comes to Red Bull? Yes, you got to keep your own way. Don't make somebody make you change the way you are and make a bad person make you a bad person. But come on, man. you got to have some backbone when it comes to dealing with these people. Otherwise, they'll just walk all over you. And the evidence for that is right there. Look how Red Bull are just walking all over the whole of Formula 1. They're taking the mick. <laughs> and that ain't no exaggeration in my brain. The way I'm seeing this, Red Bull are taking the mick out of the whole of Formula 1 and making a sham of it. And when things go wrong and when things come to light, the, the, the finger's not always pointed at Red Bull. The finger is pointed at the whole of Formula 1. But it's Red Bull's fault, man. Well, it's Formula 1's fault. Get a grip of your sport, man. Come on. Get a grip of your sport. And stop letting the participants make you look bad. Because that's what's happening. If this was football and a team steps out of line again and again and again, they get punished. If this is boxing and a boxer steps out of line, they get punished. Any sport you look at, they don't let the people that take part in their sport ruin their sport. But Formula One do, because they're so tied in with Red Bull. That it's astonishing. It's astonishing. And I, you know what I think? Do you know what I think is behind the tightness between Formula One and Red Bull? Lewis Hamilton and maybe Lewis Hamilton and Mercedes. I still can't 100% put my trust in Mercedes. I can't. The way they dealt with things, maybe it's because I'm from a different type of place and I wouldn't have dealt with it like that. I don't know. But because of that, I can't put my 100% into Mercedes. I never will anyway, because it's Mercedes. You've got to take your head out of Formula One sometimes and realise that this is Mercedes-Benz we're talking about. They ain't never going to be good. None of them are. Just as good as we want them to be. But they ain't never going to be good to the core. They're not going to be. Otherwise, they wouldn't be where they are now. But off that... And talking about Formula 1, let's close this out. What do you think? Do you think that Red Bull and Honda are staying united? Just that they're taking their team and taking it from a Honda factory to a Red Bull factory. But really it's the same people doing the same job, just under a different name. And I know it's kind of old news, but what do you think about Red Bull breaking the cost cap? Do you think they knew that they broke the cost cap? Do you think they broke it way more than they shown? And do you think that the catering situation, why the reason why they said they broke the cost cap, do you think that that was just a bit of a distraction? So Formula One, when they're looking through their books, will be looking on the left when they've done something on the right. Keeping their eyes away from where the money was really spent. Because teams like this do that. Companies like this do that kind of stuff. They don't make mistakes when it comes to finances. How can you make such a big company and make mistakes with your finances? You can't. You just can't, especially when you run a company like Red Bull, which is basically just financing things. That's all they do. As far as I'm aware, put me right if I'm wrong. But that's it from this one. What do you think about these things? What do you think about Red Bull's behavior and the way they go about stuff and the way they get away with things? Do you think it's sly? Do you think it's legit? Or what? Let me know. Let me know what you think. All right, I'm out of here.